G'day everyone, welcome back to True Footy for another trade update. I thought about doing a trade update this week and I thought, well, is there enough going on? Is there enough story since the last one I did, which was about six days ago, to justify another video? And then I sat down and there's actually a fair bit going on and a few developments on stories that I talked about last week that now have updates. So I'm gonna go through everything that has come to the surface over the last five or six days. I'll do these trade update videos sort of as and when they're needed, when there's enough stories, but they are becoming increasingly common. It's only been six days since the last one. So make sure you subscribe to this channel so you can keep up with any future ones we have coming up. At one point, very soon, it will become daily. So first of all, I wanna start off with a fairly big story um, that has now pretty much been confirmed not to happen, but I thought we'd touch base anyway. So the Zach Merritt to St Kilda thing bobbed up in uh, and died within about 24 hours before I even really had a chance to make a video on it. But essentially, it, it seems like St Kilda were reported to make a big play for Essendon's captain in Zach Merritt, which would be a huge signing and probably one of St Kilda's biggest signings for a long time. So the report says it was revealed Sunday night the Saints held serious interest in landing the gun midfielder who was contracted until 2027. So I suppose the only update here is that other than the fact that it's reported St Kilda were offering over a million dollars a year, as you'd expect, Zach Merritt is that sort of quality of player, especially with salaries going up across the board. Zach Merritt earning over a million dollars makes sense. The report says that uh, Merritt is currently um, playing through a front-loaded contract, which means at the start of his contract, he was making a little bit more than he is likely to earn at the back end of his contract. He could, in theory, leverage that and sign a new deal with St Kilda and completely maximize his income. There was a suggestion that Zach Merritt is frustrated about the club's lack of success. Well, I mean, you sort of expect that. He's a club captain. Of course, he's not gonna be happy with his team missing out on finals. However, the update here from SEN Sam Edmund is that neither the club nor Zach have any interest in exploring the concept. I will say Zach Merritt seems like an incredibly loyal type. And so I would have been very surprised if this had any legs to it. So I suppose the update there is this story burned bright for a day and then it is dead. Some stories pop up, then they die, and then they come back again. So it is possible he was Zach Merritt, but it seems really unlikely in my opinion. But either way, St Kilda making moves to improve their midfield. They are linked to somebody else in this video that I'll touch on shortly. The other one I wanna talk about is Jake Stringer. So in my very last video, there's been an update on this where there was a suggestion that Collingwood was his most likely landing spot. I think maybe that was because Majacek said he wouldn't mind playing with him. I'm not sure. The latest update is that despite initial Collingwood links, the Sydney Swans are reportedly the front runners to land Jake Stringer if he desires an Essendon departure. So if you recall, he's got a one-year uh, extension which was triggered as part of his existing contract with Essendon. There's a suggestion he's now on the lookout for a guaranteed two years, whether it be at another club or with Essendon, but it seems like his only choice is to go to another club. Now, Sydney did you know, emerge as, as a contender for Jake Stringer a little while back, then it died, and then Collingwood became the major contender. Now, Sam Edmund is clarifying it is actually Sydney, and the quote is, what I can tell you is it's not Collingwood and it won't be Collingwood. So Sam Edmund pretty much ruling the pies out there. However, he doesn't go as far as to say that he will end up at Sydney or it's very likely. He says that the Sydney are the most likely to trade with Essendon for Jake Stringer. He only says there is a chance that it happens to Sydney. So a lot to play out here. I'd imagine, you know, if Stringer really wants to go, someone will take him. And the update here is that it's not gonna be Collingwood. If it's gonna be anyone at the moment, it'll be Sydney although there's no guarantee. Let's talk about the Carlton situation. That Their off-season, sort of out of nowhere, is bubbling away a little bit and has the potential to be quite proactive. So they've apparently told three players that they are uh, allowed to look elsewhere. So apparently, according to Mitch Cleary, Matthew Kennedy and Lewis Young have been told to explore opportunities. And Matt Owies, who had a very good year, was he top three goal kickers at Carlton or something? I want to say kick 33 or 34 goals as a small forward. That's pretty good output had not had a contract extension to this point. And the suggestion is that Carlton are keeping their powder dry a little bit there. And the broader theory about this is probably that Carlton are weighing up moves for perhaps a big fish in particular. It's probably likely Dan Houston, the one that they're possibly making room for. So they're unwilling to sign some of these fringe players to contract extensions, potentially because they think there's a real chance that they end up with Dan Houston. Or at least that's the, the theory that I'm going to choose to, uh, to follow for a little bit here. So Kennedy was one of three Blues to play every game this year, but pushed to a bit more of a half forward role where he sees himself a little bit more as a midfielder. Kennedy is contracted 2025. Lewis Young is also contracted for another couple of years. That one surprises me a little bit. You know, key back depth is something that clubs are always seeking at the end of the year. So for Carlton to be proactive, maybe they're just doing the right thing by Lewis Young and said, 
hey, this is where you are in the pecking order. If you want to explore your options, go for it. It could just be that. It doesn't necessarily mean they're actively shopping him. But Matt Always as well is probably the, the highest quality, I think. Certainly on output in 2024, Matt Always potentially going to another club does surprise me. And I'd imagine this has got to be a product of Carlton weighing up moves for someone like a Dan Houston. In other news, however, according to Cal Toomey from AFL.com, Nick Haynes has either told or will tell the Giants that he's gonna join Carlton. So we knew this one was gonna happen for a little while, sort of, as I said before, it, it popped up and then it went away and it came back. So GWS have a, a number of players to consider, you know, trades for or whatever, but Nick Haynes to Carlton seems like it could be on the cards here. Played just the eight games this year. I can't imagine the Giants will put up too much of a fight considering his age profile, and it doesn't seem like there's any major contenders here. So Nick Haynes to Carlton is probably going to happen at this current point in time. A little bit of a movement in the Jack Darling situation. Again, I was probably skeptical that this was real until the momentum really started to build, but we've hit the point where Jack Darling has had a medical at North Melbourne, but further than that, he's been interviewed about it, and he's pretty much openly discussing the interview he had at North Melbourne and said, you know, it went pretty well. He's just trying to extend his career, get to 300 games. So again, not a shock here, but the update is that Jack Daly's openly talking about leaving. He's had a medical. This one seems like it's likely to happen. Not sure yet what the deal would look like, but I'd imagine given his age, um, you know, there, there may be some negotiation over who pays what percentage of the salary. Could West Coast push for a pick upgrade here? I'd imagine it's going to be pretty negligible. The value that West Coast get is, you know, another list spot and North Melbourne gets some experience. So an interesting move that could pay off for North Melbourne and I think allows West Coast some freedom to pick some younger talls in his stead. Jack McRae has nominated St Kilda as his preferred destination uh, to join next year. So he's contracted for another three years, which I, I don't think I remembered, but there was some speculation around him going to the Cats. Um, I think Melbourne was also someone that was linked to him, either that I can't remember if that was just me thinking that would be a good move. Either way, McRae to St Kilda seems likely at this point. I think if you get to a point where a, a player has nominated a club, it certainly implies that some conversations are being had at the moment. So the cost will be an interesting one, contracted for another three years, but probably not a central part of the Bulldogs' plans going forward. So I do think that works against the Bulldogs' bargaining power here. He's been dropped early this year, you know, depending again on the split of, of salary, who pays what. That will impact the price here. But Jack McRae is 30, contracted for another three years. St Kilda obviously wanting an experienced big-bodied mid midfielder to help with their blend. And I presume their intention is to play him in his right position of, you know, inside mid. He's no slouch. I mean, he played 19 games this year. I think he was dropped at one point, played a little bit out of position, but all Australian in 2019, 2020, and 2021. So St Kilda going here for a little bit of a underappreciated talent at another club approach, which I like. I hope this move works out, uh, although I, I can't imagine it's going to cost St Kilda a whole heap. So we'll move now to some GWS stories. So Isaac Cumming uh, has pretty much indicated he's going to move to South Australia this offseason, although continuing a little bit of a trend of players this year who say they're going to a certain state but haven't nominated a particular club. So Isaac Cumming is another one of those. He's an unrestricted free agent, so it doesn't matter what GWS offer him to stay. He can simply sign with a club of his choice and there isn't a huge indication which club he'll go to. I've probably heard a little bit more suggestion that it would have was Adelaide prior to this point, but both clubs have offered four years. We don't know how much either club is offering. Port Adelaide were also heavily into Harry Perryman. So are they trying to package them both up to get them over? Can they afford that? Perhaps if Dan Houston goes the other way, you think they could possibly afford it, but there's still a big possibility that Isaac coming goes the Adelaide Crows. So the big development here is just the fact that he's going to South Australia. I think, for my mind, it seemed kind of clear that Isaac Cumming was going to leave the Giants if he was uncontracted. However, that leads us to Harry Perriman, and there's, there's a little bit of an interesting development here. So Collingwood has apparently emerged as a big player for Harry Perryman very late in the piece. And to be honest, now I think about it, I don't know why they weren't previously more heavily linked to Harry Perryman as a free agent. So probably exactly the sort of player that Collingwood would be looking at. So we know that Perryman is weighing up interest from Port Adelaide and Hawthorne. Uh, there is a six year deal from the Giants. I said in a video recently, West Coast has also been named as still having a pop at Harry Perryman, even if, if that's quite ambitious and now Collingwood as well. This is on the back of Mark Keane also deciding to remain in Adelaide with the Crows. There was a suggestion that he might move back to Victoria to play for Collingwood. It still says Port Adelaide is the favorite for Harry Perryman, uh, but interestingly, according to Mitch Cleary, Perryman had his exit interview at GWS and didn't indicate what his plans were. So does that imply 
there is a chance he stays at GWS. I think that is possibly true. Another GWS player has requested a trade. Uh, this time it is Wade Dirksen, who hasn't played a lot of footy. He was a 2022 mid-season rookie draft selection. 194 centimeter key position player. I think he started as a forward at VFL level, kicked 35 goals from 18 last year. This year moved back. So not a whole lot to say here. He's 23 and requested a trade to Victoria. And he has been linked to the Melbourne Football Club who clearly want you know, key position, talent, and depth. And this is potentially a good value move for them. And I imagine it won't cost them much. There has been a little bit of development around Gold Coast. First of all, Elliot Himmelberg is now reportedly highly likely to go to the Gold Coast Suns. So if you recall, Himmelberg was rumored last year to want to get to GWS to play with his brother. That has now changed where he's likely to get to the Gold Coast Suns. Where I hadn't really heard a peep about this Himmelberg situation for some time but this is a new development here. He's also an unrestricted free agent, which means a deal for the Gold Coast Suns would only cost some salary, which to be honest is not insignificant when you consider the off season that Gold Coast are linked to having. So we talked about Daniel Rioli a fair bit. He's likely to get there, you'd think. Dusty Martin is also a good chance. Apparently that's emerged in the last week or so, considering a retirement backflip to go join uh, the Gold Coast Suns and, and Damien Hardwick, which would just be huge for you know the branding and profile of that team. Not sure how much money that will be. The, the suggestion might only be $300,000, but that's not nothing. Rioli will probably cost a fair chunk. Dusty, you know, 300,000 is the rumor. It might be a little bit more than that. They've just signed MacAndrew on a massive deal as well. Now Himmelberg is a free agent. Again, that will probably be a cheaper deal, but I suppose we're shooting in the dark a little bit, trying to speculate on what kind of money clubs have at the moment because the CBA has changed and, and generally the salary cap is going up. So a very interesting watch this space on the Gold Coast Suns at the moment. Himmelberg, Rioli, Dusty Martin are the established players likely to get there. You'd think the main long to medium term one there is Rioli. Himmelberg a little bit more speculative. Dusty will just, just about be a one and done. Probably there to sell a few tickets, I'd imagine, but it would be entertaining to see play up there. There's every chance it'll just be one or two seasons max, and I don't know if that would seriously improve them as a team, but you know, if Gold Coast make the finals next year and they've got Dusty in their forward line, gee whiz, that could be very, very interesting. Uh, another note is that, uh, you know, John Ralph has talked about Damien Hardwick this year, really rattling some cages at the Gold Coast Suns in his um, exit interviews, which I found interesting. So he says that, Hardwick is mad as hell and not going to take it anymore. He's been on the warpath in his exit interviews and he says, I think Gold Coast loves it. So this is a quote from, uh, from John Ralph. He says, players including Malcolm Roses got told, you better come back in elite shape or go and play for somebody else. And apparently Malcolm said, or well, more or less paraphrasing, okay, I'll go and play for someone else. Roses then, according to Ralph, then found some suitors, clubs that were interested in him. And then Gold Coast said, no, you're playing with us. <laughs> So I found that interesting as well, and this probably comes off the back of the report of, of Jack Lacocious apparently being told he can explore his options. He's pretty well paid from what I understand at Gold Coast Suns. You know, there was a bit of a suggestion that perhaps that conversation went along the lines of, you're not quite playing to the standard that you're being paid, so perhaps look elsewhere. I don't know, this is all conjecture at this point, but this could be a very interesting and impactful off season for the Gold Coast Suns, and it may or may not be positive. But there you have it guys, that is my update on all the trade news. Again, as it pops up, as it continues to accelerate, I will continue to accelerate the videos. So hope you're enjoying it. Make sure you subscribe to keep up with all the content. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.